It's really hot in Toronto this weekend. All I've been thinking about is having a nice cold glass of lemonade. So I decided to make a lemonade stand cake and I'm decorating it with some gorgeous sugar cookies made by Megan. Now I've already made two other lemon cakes on this channel. I made pink lemonade, the visual cake, and I made the lemon meringue mega cake. So I kept thinking like, what haven't I done with lemons? And I decided that I wanted to make lemon shortbread bars to put inside this cake. These lemon shortbread bars are really easy to make, but you do have to make them ahead of time and let them set so that you can cut them and put them in your cake. The shortbread crust is really simple. It just has butter, flour, icing sugar, and a pinch of salt. And you can mix it all together either with your hands or a mixer or a food processor. And then you press it into the bottom of your rectangular pan. Then you need to bake the crust on its own, which they call blind baking. I like the name blind baking. Yeah. It could be a movie series. Right. I but blind baking too. <laughs> Everybody is getting in line for this movie, or her. While your crust is baking, you can prepare the lemon filling that gets poured on top. And that filling is made out of freshly squeezed lemon juice, freshly grated lemon zest, sugar, eggs, and a bit of flour. Then you pour the filling on top of your crust, and then you bake it all again. And once it's done, you let it cool completely, and I put mine in the fridge to chill and set so it would be ready to put inside my cake. If you guys don't wanna make this whole cake, at least make the lemon shortbread bars. They're so good, they're so easy, and I think it's like a perfect summer dessert. For the cake part of this cake, I baked two rectangular pans of my vanilla cake. I dyed one of the pans pink. Cause there's something about like pink and yellow I really like and it makes me think of pink lemonade. It's very how to cake it. My cakes are baked, cooled, chilled. The next thing I wanna do is level each cake and then remove the caramelization from the bottom. Now I can layer these cakes into two and then remove all the caramelization from the sides. The next thing I need to do is use my ruler and cut this cake into strips lengthwise. I'm cutting each cake into two strips and the first strip needs to be twice as wide as the second strip. The first two thicker strips are two layers and then the two thinner strips when put together are the same size as the thicker strip. So that's three layers. I did this to both cakes and now I have a total of six layers of cake. Three of them are pink, three of them are just vanilla. And now I'm gonna shower them all with simple syrup, but not any simple syrup. Lemon simple syrup, more lemon. While the syrup is soaking into my cakes, I'm going to remove my lemon shortbread bars from the pan. You wanna be really careful. You can just run a knife or a spatula along the sides. Because we don't wanna rip off that lemon layer, you can just sift some icing sugar onto the top surface of the lemon bars. Then I laid down a piece of parchment and a smaller rectangular pan inside, and then I flipped my bars out and then I flipped them onto a board. Now I'm gonna cut the bars to fit inside my cake. So I trim the edges wherever I need to, and then I make sure to cut the thick strip out to the exact same size as my cake layers. I, I wonder what's gonna happen to the lemonade stand business. First of all, I don't think any little kid could afford like the shields, handing out masks, you know what I mean? Yeah. A sanitization machine for the glasses. Now it's like, it's too much of a business venture. So yeah. Now what I wanna do is flavor some of my Italian meringue buttercream lemon. So in order to do this, all I'm doing is adding some lemon curd into my buttercream and stirring it in. And I wanted it to be a little more yellow. Like the lemon curd doesn't really color the buttercream, it just makes it you know, slightly more yellow. So I added a little bit of yellow gel coloring to really bring out the yellow. So basically we're building a rectangle that's gonna be tall. And that's like our little table that we're gonna sell lemonade on. So the cake was a pink layer, lemon buttercream. A plain layer, lemon buttercream, a pink layer, lemon buttercream, a plain layer, lemon buttercream, lemon bar, right? Then lemon buttercream, then a pink layer, lemon buttercream, and then a plain layer. Woo! What made you do that? 
each choose the placement of the lemon bar? I thought about it. First, I was going to put it at the bottom, but then I was afraid that the weight of all the cake and buttercream might squash the filling on the bar. So I decided I'm going to put it higher up. But not only that, the placement of the lemon shortbread bar in the cake is going to help me with the decorating. And you'll see why when we get there. So now that I've filled and stacked my cake really nicely straight up and down, I just wanna put it in the fridge to chill before I crumb coat. I never had a lemonade stand, not even once, but I grew up in an apartment, so throwing lemonade off a balcony is actually an offense. So I got left out of the lemonade stand business. I'm taking my cake back out of the fridge and at this point I want to take a moment to measure and make sure my cake is still level at the top and that it's all straight up and down on the sides. If it's not, this is the perfect time to trim the sides of your cake or re-level the top because we really want this to be a perfect rectangle. Now we can crumb coat and chill this rectangle. I have more lemon buttercream left over so I'm going to use that for my crumb coat and then pop it in the fridge to chill. Now that my crumb coat is chilled, I'm going to ice this cake. I'm icing it with plain Italian meringue buttercream and I'm gonna use a bench scraper to really help me perfect the sides and keep everything nice and straight. I'm happy with how my cake is iced. At this point, I'm gonna put it back in the fridge to chill. And while it's chilling, I'm going to roll out some fondant. The first thing you need to do is always measure your cake. So make sure you've measured your cake before you roll your fondant. You wanna know how high it is and then how wide the sides are. Now I'm gonna roll out three slabs of white fondant, keeping those measurements in mind. I wanna roll it a bit bigger than I need it so I can trim away the excess. And I'm rolling out three long slabs. One will cover the front, one will cover the back, and one will be cut in half and cover the shorter sides. I also want to roll out one slab of pink because I'm going to cover the top of the table in pink. And then I want to roll out a sheet of thinner pink fondant, which I will cut stripes from. When I roll out the fondant, I like to place it individually on cake boards and place it in the fridge to chill. I find this extra helpful when um, it's summer. And when I'm covering a cake like this in panels, as I refer to it. So when you measure your cake, you always want to measure all the way around because even though it might look perfect to you, one side could be just slightly higher than another and you want to cut your fondant to the height of the highest side. But I have to tell you something phenomenal happened with this cake. Are you even ready? All four sides were completely equal. I don't think you understand how groundbreaking that is. I really don't. Can you insert like Olympic stadium type cheering? So I've cut my white fondant slab to the exact height of the cake. I'm gonna cover the two shorter sides first. So I'm going to line up like the straight top and the straight side with my cake and use a fondant smoother to smooth it on. I always start by covering two opposite sides and in this case I'm covering the two short sides of the rectangle. Now I can use my ruler and a knife to trim away the excess along the other side. And you wanna use the middle of the blade and use your cake as a guide, cutting slowly down so you know you're cutting straight along the cake. If it's really warm and you feel like your fondant is dragging, you can also chill the cake before making this cut. Now I'm gonna repeat this process, but with the two longer sides. So once again, I'm cutting my slabs to the exact height of my cake, making sure they're wider than my cake. I cut one side straight, line it up, smooth it on, and then I trim away the excess. You usually just drape a really long piece of fondant over the cake and smooth it. Why, why didn't you make it this time? Orhan, as usual, you're not paying attention. I don't usually do that with square cakes. I usually do that with round cakes. I knew the answer. I was just asking. You're testing me? With the audience are thinking the question. You're testing me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Long time how to cake it viewers, please leave a comment below if you were wondering why I didn't drape the fondant over the square. Because I know you know. I know you didn't expect me to do that. You know what I like? I like that I feel like, I like to tell myself I have my own like, bay hive. You know, like Beyonce. Yeah. yeah. I told you were calling them yo-yos. Yo-yos, they are, they are. That's what I'm saying. The yo-yos always like rise to the occasion and answer. You're obviously not a yo-yo, Orhan. No, I'm, I'm a human. Not, not a toy.
Okay. Now I can cover the top of the cake with a panel of pink. I wanna make sure to measure the top of my cake. And then I'm gonna cut two perpendicular sides of the rectangle perfectly straight. And then carefully pick up the fondant, like line it up with the straight sides. And now you need to cut away the excess on the other two sides. This time you do it from above. So what you can do is mark on the sides of the fondant where it meets the cake, lay your ruler on top, look down and use your knife flush against the cake, but this time in a downward motion across the top. From that same slab of pink fondant, I want to cut out four equal strips. So I cut out four equal strips that were about three quarters of an inch in length. And I'm gonna be using that to sort of frame the top of my cake. I wanna lightly wet the back of each strip and then I'm gonna use my ruler to help me pick up the strip. So I can hold it up against the cake and press it right along the top edge. So now it's time to add some stripes. I'm gonna put my cake back in the fridge and pull out the thin sheet of pink fondant. I'm gonna use a ruler and a sharp paring knife to cut out a whole bunch of stripes. My stripes are ready. I'm gonna cut them to the height I need them. So I measured from the bottom of the cake up to that top strip. And what I'm gonna do is flip all my stripes over, brush on a little bit of water really lightly, and then I'm gonna line them up on my cake. You can use a ruler to help mark the base of your cake so you know where you're lining up your stripes. And I also use a little bit of foam core that I cut to fit within that area because I knew my ruler would be too long to help me line up the stripes. So I use this piece of foam as a ruler. And I'm creating this stripe pattern all the way around the cake. Here's another wonderful thing that happened. Sometimes when I measure the length of the cake so I could cut the stripes, it's never a number that divides evenly. Guess what it was? It's like, it's like two home runs in one game. I mean, I suppose you can make a lemonade stand on any kind of table, but I kind of wanted it to look like one of those really nice tablecloths, you know, and I wanted it to be really pretty because the cookies that Megan made me are so gorgeous. I'm not just gonna put it on like a white rectangle. So Megan is one of our dessert artists here at How To Cake It, and she teaches a lot of our Bake You Happy tutorials. She's basically a sugar cookie queen. These cookies are gorgeous, and they're really gonna turn my cake into a lemonade stand. And if you wanna learn how to make these cookies yourself, there's an upcoming Bake You Happy live tutorial with Megan, and you can make this exact set of cookies. This is just one of our upcoming Bake You Happy tutorials. There's a list of different artists teaching different things like cupcakes, tie-dye cake. We have something for everyone. Head to the link in the description below to check them out. It's time to add these gorgeous sugar cookies to the cake. I have to say, like normally things I have to do to my cake make me nervous, but in the case of this cake, I was so nervous about ruining Megan's beautiful cookies. I can't even tell you. I had them all lined up on a cookie sheet with a baking mat and I really carefully flipped them over. And now what I wanna do is glue a popsicle stick. It's not even a popsicle stick, it's like a tongue depressor. It's like the thick popsicle stick. I wanna glue one to the back of each cookie with royal icing. So I just iced a little bit of royal icing on to the popsicle stick, cleaned off the sides, and then gently pressed it on the cookie. You want it to be secure, but you don't want to press so hard that you ruin the beautiful royal icing underneath. You need to let the royal icing dry completely before you add your cookies to the cake. So you can do this at any point in the cake process. You just need to make sure that royal icing is dry. Now here's where the lemon shortbread bars really came into play. Having that bar in the center of my cake really helped to keep the popsicle sticks aligned straight down into my cake as I pushed them in. I set up the top really nice. So I put the sign on, along the front of the cake and then I put like a couple of the lemon clusters along the front. Like these are the, almost like these are the Bristol board signs at your lemonade stand. And then on top, I put the pitcher, I put the bowl of lemons and then I had the glasses staggered. And since I had leftover lemon shortbread bar, what I did was I cut out little mini squares and then I topped them with some more icing sugar and I stacked them. I made like little clusters of squares because this is what sets my lemonade stand apart from the other lemonade stands. When you come to my stand, you get a glass of lemonade and a lemon bar. I'm an entrepreneur, okay? Oh, 
Okay, I'm gonna cut this cake. I'm so excited to cut this cake. You know what always excites me, and I've said this before, by the time I get to the end, I often forget what the middle looked like. So I, I remembered that there was lemon shortbread bars because as I was putting the stick in, I felt the shortbread, but I totally forgot that I dyed some of the cake pink. So then when I cut it open, I loved it because there's pink stripes on the outside and you also see pink stripes on the inside. It's Pinkception. If you guys need even more cake, you know where to click.